Hello and welcome to the Student Hub Live Bootcamp. Well, a lot of people have been joining our sessions since we kicked off this morning at uh, 10 o'clock. If you've missed anything, you can watch the catch up, which will be available very shortly after today's show. We've been chatting a lot um, and we've sort of been mentioning the various ways that you can engage with the chat, with our email um, and with our Twitter handle, which is um, at Student Hub Live and our hashtag is Student Hub Live 17. But you've come up with some brilliant ideas as we've been talking about reading this morning and the action way um, in which we all read various different subjects. Now, you'll see a lot of widgets coming up and we'd like to know which level you're studying, um, which subject area you're studying, and also whether or not you're used to taking notes when reading, if you're happy with the way you're taking notes. Um, and when reading, I mainly highlight the text, annotate, write my own notes, copy chunks of text, or none of these. We know that highlighting has been a very popular subject for discussion, and I imagine one that will come into play in our next session where we take a look at note taking. Um, now, I'm joined joined by um, another member of academic staff. We've been um, rolling academic members of staff in to tell you about all these study skills. And so far, we've had um, Lisa from STEM um, and then Azuma from Department of Education. Um, but Suzanne is from Religious Studies, um, which is one of my favorite areas. Um, and they're going to be doing some great discussions at our Freshers event next week. Um, but your research interests are in new and minority religions in Britain. Um, I mean, you do some fantastic stuff. But here we are talking about note taking today. <laughs> and you brought some lovely examples with you. We've talked about this whole active process and, you know, it, it's very clear that, that the notes are the result of this active process of reading. So could you talk us through why it's important for students to take notes and what, what some of these notes might look like? Well, why is, I think, follows on very well from, from Azula's talk about active reading and, and one, of the, one of the reasons to take notes is just to engage yourself as you're reading. Uh, when I was a student attending lectures, sometimes I felt like I was taking notes just to kind of almost stay awake when I was 18. And you might need to do the same thing when you're reading. Not everything you read is as interesting to you as, as you might want it to be. So, so engaging yourself, being an active reader, underlining what's, what's going on here is just one way to take notes that helps you at the time integrate and think about and really understand the material. And a different important reason for note taking is for assessments. It might be for an essay or for an exam, and you might do this the first time you read it, or you might need to go back and read again. So you can read with a, a specific purpose in mind. What's the answer to this question you're going to be asked to answer for, for an assessment purpose? That's a brilliant idea. I just sort of thought, I often take notes in meetings when I'm not quite sure, you know, what's going on. Because sometimes you can get the sort of sense. We were talking before about students reading, you know, huge amounts of text and saying, actually, sometimes we lose track of the point. Absolutely, yeah. So sometimes actually writing down the point can yeah. be a really great way to focus yourself. No, absolutely, absolutely. And and how and, and where to do it is also really interesting. So for meetings and when I'm reading, I've got, I've got my personal, like, little journal where I just note things down. So if I miss something at a meeting, I know, I know it's there. Yeah. But actually, this is a bit messy in terms of if I'm going to be writing an article or something. And, and so I use lots of different ways of writing notes, depending on where I am. But just any way that I can capture something I'm thinking and know I can go back to find it. And particularly moving online, there's lots of other ways to take notes and to remember and, and go back and find things for revision purposes as well. So I'd really encourage you to both use the ones you're familiar with and maybe try some of the new ones that are more accessible and, and, and integrated with your, your modules. Um, like for the religious studies courses, we've got online blogs, um, which we're encouraging, encouraging people to use as a learning journal. And these can be really helpful because you can tag subjects. So you can look at what's going on to the exam and write little notes saying, OK, anything that relates to this question, I've, I can bring up here. Um, you can also do, do the cutting and pasting of text, which is quite popular. But like when I was a student, you used to go to the library and photocopy loads of articles so you could take them home and read them, but you might not actually read them. Kind of like the act of photocopying sometimes was, was instead of reading. <laughs> and you've got to be careful when you cut and paste text that you've actually read it and you've understood it because you can get a bit lazy because everyone's a bit um, pressed for time and we're all, we're all struggling to fit everything in our lives. And I think you're going to talk about that more later. But um, it, it can be helpful helpful to know where to look for things again, but you also need to do the act of reading and, and integrating it. And I think note taking is all about the bridge between the two of, of how do you find things later and how do you engage with them right now. People do this in their own way. Um, and I've seen at tutorials, often students will bring their notes with them. Um, and it's amazing the sort of range of ways that they take notes. And I guess the equivalent of what you're talking about in terms of highlighting big amounts of text is writing verbatim. What 
that text says. And sometimes when they're doing assignments, um, you can inadvertently end up writing that because you're just translating things from your notes. How important is it then to sort of rehash things, to sort of put them in your own words, to make sense of something, in particular, I guess, when it might be quite a complex idea. We've got a lot of STEM students in here today, um, and whilst the majority are at level one, we've got, you know, nearly a quarter at level two. Um, so they're going to be coming across a lot of definitions and terms that they're going to need to note to take. Um, and some of those will be very important to understand in exactly the same way that they're formatted. So how might students go about this whole idea about, you know, identifying what's important and knowing when to cut and paste or copy chunks of text? And and when to maybe be a little bit more discursive about how things relate to each other? Well, I think they're, they're both very important skills, and maybe you do them at different times. Um, at first, you might need to, particularly in a, a, something more STEM or mathematics oriented, you might just need to memorise the definition. And for that, you might think about kind of note cards or the old library card catalogue. And, and there's even online programmes now which create your own note cards. But then when it comes to actually knowing that you understand them, um, I find, like, I, I like doing mind maps or kind of STEM... Yeah, let me show people at home. Cause STEM I want to things. And I, so I think, I think when you do something like this, if you just take a blank piece of paper and write out a map of what you can remember, then you find the holes, the gaps in your understanding, and you can look those up again. So on the one hand, some of it's memorization, but also some of it, you definitely need to put things in your own words. You definitely need to start thinking about which connections you naturally come to and which maybe you need to go back to your book and, and look at again in order to make sure you really understand. We asked people what they mainly do when they're reading. Let's take a look at what people said at home. So most people are writing their own notes, which is great. Um, a lot of people are highlighting texts, annotating texts. This is changing all the time, copying chunks of texts um, and none of these. And just to sort of give you an idea, Suzanne, about who's out there right now, um, we've got, you know, arts and social science and STEM students. Um, the highest percentage is other. Sorry, we've got too many sort of subject areas to really sort of <laughs> identify. So it's just a bit of a potluck. But you might want to tell us in the chat what you're studying as well. And it's, I know it's great for students to know other students who are on your module um, or or even in your sort of subject area as well. Um, okay, so it's good people are writing their own notes and you've sort of mentioned why it's important to do that. Um, you've also sort of said you do different things at different times. So what from majority of level one students would you recommend that they could sort of try in terms of different strategies to take notes? What sort of things do you think that they should give a go um, at? Sort of see if they like. Um, I think that doing the by hand, something that you, you, you write with your physical hand often engages your mind in a different way. Yeah. But also, everyone's lives are very busy, and so I think thinking about where you can think, where you can where you process your information. So I like taking notes in cafes, because I yeah. find the background buzz yeah, yeah. really helpful, and I often outline essays in cafes. But also, um, after um, I had my child and was very busy, I found walking the dog was an important place to mentally think about what was going on. So I started um, talking into my phone on the yeah. recorder so that I could, I could, I didn't look like I was crazy. But if I was thinking about something that I would have taken a note about, but I didn't have my pen and paper there, I could just talk into my phone and then I'd go back to my desk and listen to my recording. And, and write it out so it was easier to find again. There's some new interesting tools so you can go back and, and tag audio recordings if that's really your favourite way of integrating information. Um, what about post-it notes? They're yeah, my they're personal favourite and I, yeah. everyone out there loves stationery. Um, post-it notes can be a really great way of doing things and, and they also come in different colours which I think is very handy. Absolutely. How might students sort of use post-it notes and do you ever do that if you're sort of trying to write an essay or, or paper? Certainly, I, I certainly have done that in, in the past, and um, I was lucky enough to have a big blank wall in my house at one point, and so I had lots of post-it notes that I was rearranging all over the wall in terms of, oh, these ideas go over here, this will be chapter two. Um, but you can do that for, for a smaller essay as well, like th this is the introduction section. These are all the different points I want to do, and then reorder them. Um, and I think colours are a really good way to... Um, group different ideas and different subjects and it makes you pay attention in a different way. I love different coloured pens as well. Um, I, I, I try to organise things but I think it's more just important to get it down and to, to keep your, your mind engaged and the colours definitely help with that. And the, the post-it notes can go in your, in your books as well that you can get those little things that stick out. And, yes, the and tabs. The tabs and you can write little notes on the tabs if they're bigger tabs of this is, this is an important definition, what's going on here, I don't understand that. That's another important reason to take a note saying I don't understand this bit and then quite often with the act of reading if you read it again or you, you, you know to ask your tutor about it perhaps 
perhaps then you can use the note taking as a, as a way of really having a dialogue with the subject and other people. Now, Helen has a question um, because she um, takes a lot of notes, but she says she doesn't often use them. So how can we hone these notes? I mean, it goes back to the point of what are they for? Um, and I guess to some extent you're saying they help you learn, which they do. But, but equally, we're really just concerned about our assignments a lot of the time as well. So, so what might Helen sort of take from this? Well, first of all, I think the act of taking them is probably doing more than she realises that um, just by just by taking the notes, you're learning in a different way, more than just reading. So there's not they're not a waste of time, even if you don't refer to them again. But also, when you go back to think about your assignments, just read through them and see if anything jumps out, because you might have forgotten something. And then you might need to take a new set of notes when it comes to your assignment to refer back to those notes and refer to your reading materials. Um, the things your tutor has told you. So there's, there's one set of notes as you're reading, as you're going along, and then you take another set of notes in preparation for your exam or your essay or your assignment. So you, you do different notes all the time for different purposes. Yeah, yeah. It, I think it is really interesting to be able to look back on them months later and, you know, you, you can sort of get clarity and they can really crystallise where you were at at a place and time. I remember um, when I was uh, doing memory, I, I took some brilliant notes. I was so proud of them. I've kept them and they were very pictorial and I had all these sort of images and I can I can visually remember them so well. And I, I really love those notes. And actually, there are times when I think, actually, even though I'm not maybe doing that, I can still remember those things and they'll come up in conversation. So it's all about the knowledge. Um, and it was a subject I really loved at the time. So it's something that I, I find was worthwhile taking notes about just because it really helped me clarify things and, and I feel better about it. Is there that sense of, of that, you know, this is our own learning um, and to some extent if we're taking notes and sort of helping to clarify the area. We're investing in our future, the degrees that we're all doing um, at the moment. Absolutely. And, and it's about your where you're at at this point in time and, and what you're thinking about and your understanding of the world. And one of the reasons I love these books is because I've had them I've been using these for the last 20 years, so I can pick one up off the shelf and say, oh, was I really thinking that when I was 20? Yeah. Um, and it kind of can bring me back to the cafe I was sitting in when I was reading that book for the first time. And it, it's really interesting to be able to access how your mind's changed, how your thinking's changed over a long period of time. But even if you lose the books, if you lose your notes, you, you still have a better memory of them having yeah. gone through the process. It's, yeah. not, it's not the object, it's the whole process and the, the way your mind is, is changing and you're thinking about things in different ways. Now, is this a, a pen and paper type thing? I know that you sort of mentioned some of the more technical ways of doing things, um, but I would like to return to this because some of our students are very organised um, and focus on things like taking notes on a computer. You mentioned some of the more snazzy things like, you know, audio tagging and, and things that are far too complex for me to understand. <laughs> but I know that there are some really nice mind map um, programs that you can sort of access um, and some students will take notes on a computer just on a word document Absolutely. or maybe powerpoint as well so they don't have to be too snazzy but there are things that are easily accessible to help one make these links are they as good if you're sort of copying and pasting things on a mind map or do you think there is this benefit in actually physically doing something with what you're learning I think there's, there's positive advantages and disadvantages to every method and in some ways typing notes out is, makes it easier for you to perhaps integrate them into your assignments and you can have backups on the cloud, um, which is if I left this in a cafe, then that would be the end of it. Um, but I think that we're, we're really about movement and, and learning is about your whole body and so doing things with your hands kind of thinking about your study as you're taking a walk, as you're, as you're doing things in your life, helps you learn. Um, so there is something about pen and paper that's important, but also all these new, new gadgets online, taking notes on Word documents, backing them up on blogs, um, it, they're all good. So, so just try, to try, try something new and don't, don't drop what works for you, if you know what works for you. Well, there's been a lot of advice um, and a lot of tips and things. So I'd like to hear what people have been saying at home. Um, and some people have got the jitters um, as they're starting their studies. And I hear that um, people are really reassuring each other. Um, so it's great for those of you who aren't new to the OU to tell our new students what it's all about. HJ, how's everything going? Uh, it's going well. Uh, Peter actually said uh, he's really happy about starting arts and humanities with the OU. And uh, Mervyn's likes all the advice in the chat and in the session and uh, is very determined now, which is great to see. And um, 
uh, we've got uh, people talking about how they do notes in different modules. So uh, human mi biology might be a bit different styles than uh, some of the other modules. And uh, Tanya's doing exploring philosophy and exploring religion at level two. So uh, she's going to be very busy, I think, over the next couple of weeks. But uh, there's a few people, uh, it's a while away, but uh, they're already thinking about exams and how they can best make notes through their modules that they can look back at uh, during the exams as well and um, there's a few people wondering about the best way to put things in your own words when making notes as well not just copying it out which uh, you may be able to help us with mm. there's, a, there's a lot of um, a lot of people nervous so it's up and coming uh, well it's only two weeks until the October start so a lot of people are, are kind of getting that anxiety which is it's a good thing don't worry um, there's stuff that you can do. Some of the courses do have in inductions that you can do. There's some boot camps and more fresher events that we're doing here next week. Um, just make sure that you can kind of organise your time, make sure you've got a space at home, whatever you kind of need to do to help you prepare, uh, just do so. And if you have any kind of uh, thoughts or, or questions, then you can, you can just give us a call as well uh, to kind of discuss that and we'll help you out as well. With um, doing things in your own words, and then I'll, I'll, I'll speak to exams, um, I think what I usually recommend doing is, is reading the text, the original text, and then shutting your eyes, and like maybe having two or three breaths, and then trying to write it yourself. Um, and I would, I would keep a note of where the original was, because you might need to go back to it. I don't think it's so important for note-taking to necessarily write in your own words, as opposed to copying it out, but when you go to your assignments in your exams, you're going to have to do it in your own words. And we're interested in what you understand, not if you can memorize a, a chunk of text. So um, reading it, looking away, and then coming back to it. Don't look at the text when you're trying to take the notes. Just see what you can remember. And for exams, I think the, the most helpful thing to do is to read the specimen exam paper or the past exam papers at the beginning of your course. Get some idea of the types of categories, the, the, the big areas that are definitely going to come up and make, make a note of that. But just keep it in the back of your mind. Don't stress about what the exact questions are going to be. But you know there's going to be a question on um, this aspect of mechanics or um, this bit about how people use language. And you can have a, the old fashioned way was, was I had like notebooks with tabs, um, which very few people do that now, but you can think about the tabs. If you, if you go back to the old fashioned way, there's a tab for this, this kind of exam question, there's a tab for this kind of exam question, and you can organize your notes in either in a Word document or some kind of online um, typing document or by hand. You can have kind of uh, different sections for different categories. And I think just having those categories in the back of your head and, and reviewing them every now and then can really help you prepare for the exam. And then you've got this right structure when you come to your serious exam preparation at the end of the year. So there's the sense really, I guess what you're saying is that, that note taking sort of is a process between what you're reading here and then what goes on wherever it is. Mm -hmm. And that some space can sometimes help clarify then what you might choose to write down so that really you're identifying the key areas. But also that within that whole process of reading a chapter and then consolidating various things and then coming towards the end of a module for an exam, the notes might look very different and because they have a different function. Absolutely. You're refining what you're focusing on. Perhaps with a different question, you might be looking at something um, about linking things. You might be looking at a compare and contrast. You, you, you'll have a different way of, of using those notes. So the notes aren't done in the sense you can read a chapter and you can have taken notes on that chapter but that's not necessarily done the notes are always working for you as a learning aid um, and are really sort of the way that you're sort of understanding the material that you're reading absolutely absolutely and that's why it's good to have have notes that link you back to the original source as well because yeah. you might need to read it in a different way when you come to the exam yeah back to original sources there's a bit of a conversation going on about referencing and um, I think Suzanne wants to know if anyone actually likes referencing I, I've <laughs> never the library I'll tell you the library like reference you can talk to them about it on their 24-hour the live chat. <laughs> They'll love it. Um, Justin doesn't like it and Morty, I think, does. Um, but, you know, this idea of, of being able to trace back is a good thing. If you can at least reference the page on the note, even if it is just the chapter um, and the page, it can sort of give you that link back to the original contents. Absolutely. And it, it can be really annoying to get everything in the right format. And I mean, as an academic, each journal has a different format. And I have the same frustrations that you do trying to get well, in our, our courses is OU Harvard style and trying to put the commas in the right place. Yeah. But the point of referencing is the way it trains your thinking. 
and I think it is really valuable in does this claim need some evidence behind it and where can you find that evidence and and training yourself to think like that is really valuable and a really important part of study and and learning at the university level and without that you've not really got um, half the point of, of understanding and knowledge at, at this level. Yeah and even identifying just at a very basic level of as a primary or secondary source you know sort of who's saying what about it and in what context. Absolutely absolutely and and they're both very valuable and a lot of what you're learning in in the undergraduate level is is how to use primary sources to what extent is this valid to what extent might this be a better source than an academic in a way if it's a first-hand account of a historical event, um, it has a different kind of importance to someone who's analysing it later. So it's really about thinking, who, who, where did this knowledge come from? How authoritative it is? Is it a textbook that was from 30 years ago rather than today and we've changed our understandings of how the world works? So really thinking about where, where does your knowledge come from is an important part of note taking and referencing. So it's not, it, it's got a very important point in terms of your thinking and your understanding. It's not just annoying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'd like to see what people are talking about at home because um, uh, Connor, we think, is using avoidance tactics because he's gone out and bought loads of pens and posting those, but he hasn't actually mentioned how he might be using them. Uh, so we'd be interested in your thoughts for all of this, Connor. Um, and also, Julie, I'm really pleased that after three, four modules, you finally nailed the referencing. That must feel amazing. Well done, you. AJ and Zach, what else is going on? Uh, I think I do have to agree, though. I like uh, Connor's uh, idea of going out and shopping for pens and paper and pencils. I think it's quite therapeutic when you're stressed yeah. out a bit about. You but you should have to use the night show. <laughs> <laughs> we had this discussion yesterday. I think some people just like to have a pristine notebook next to them and not use it. But um, I think uh, Zoe, it's really nice. She says. Um, uh, just about her future plan. She wants to go into publishing and she loves writing books and loves reading them. So if she, she can find a, a job down the editing side, uh, she'd be over the moon, which is really nice to hear. And uh, Libby's got a really great tip, actually. So uh, she says, I'm going to prepare a sheet of notes about the key elements of the TMAs, the EMAs exam. So uh, when she studies, she knows what relevant uh, bits might be relevant to that. I really like that. And uh, I've just put a little note because I, I really like that tip and I'm going to put up on the board of one of our top tips for today. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think everyone's happy and doing everyone's well. Good. And yeah, a lot, of, mm. a lot of chat. I have to agree with a lot of people. I'm definitely one of these people that has a lot of post-it notes, highlighters, mm. uh, binders, tabs. And I just like, it, it is therapeutic just having that there and, and getting set up and using that to kind of remind yourself of, of little bits and pieces is, uh, is definitely a good top tip there. So Zach, you came here today sort of hoping to get ideas from everybody about your own <laughs> studies. And so what I'd like to know is what tips are you going to take from the readers um, that you're going to incorporate in your studies this year? So I, uh, well, I'm quite liking the mind mapping. Um, I'm quite li liking the kind of note taking. A lot of a lot of uh, people on the chat have already discussed the kind of study skills section on their help centre, which is which is great to see. It's something I'm <laughs> discussing quite a lot of the time, so I'm going to rush back and visit that. Um, and just overall, there's a lot of discussion about. Uh, kind of everything we've kind of discussed this morning including uh, using online notes I'm someone who likes to type more than more than write because uh, like much like a zoomer my uh, handwriting is awful um, so yeah some good ideas to take back I think I should be I should be fine I'm <laughs> Good. You will be fine. You will. And, and the whole beauty of these events is sharing ideas. Um, and as we keep saying, it's so important to try new things. So I hope you've got lots of inspiration um, that you're going to include in your learning. Now, Zach, you brought us very nicely um, and appropriately to our last point, which is the Help Centre, um, because we do have these notes. We've got some critical reading techniques and some great books on note taking for students. So you can find these um, at the Study at the OU um, and the Help Centre will have uh, some books that will be really useful. So if you are keen to get going, why not take some time going through some of those um, so that you can start applying them to your learning. Tell us why they're so useful for students. I think that even if you, you, you feel like you know what you're doing, it's really good to go back to the critical reading um, booklet and think about other other questions you can ask are you doing all these all these processes and and asking the right questions and I think that even when I go back and read it after working as an academic for so long there's things that I haven't done so no matter where you are in your study I think it's it's great to go back and and think about different ways of reading talk to your other students about how how they find the best ways of engaging with what they're learning 
it's always there's always something to learn. There's always a conversation, and the the online resources are absolutely excellent. I, I, I wish everyone had them. I wish I had them when I was a student. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are. They're really, really good. Well, thank you so much, Suzanne, for coming along and filling us in, and, and thank you for all your advice um, and sharing ideas, etc. At home, when you came to the session, we asked about whether um, you were used to taking notes when you're reading. Sixty-two percent of you at the time said you were. We asked whether you were happy with that. Sixty-one percent said no. So I hope you've picked up some new ideas, and I hope that that widget has changed. We're going to have a quick campus tour now um, uh, where we're going to look at the Jenny Lee building um, and then we'll be back for some time management. Also, I must plug our next event, uh, which is our freshers, um, refreshers uh, and orientation events. That's for new and continuing students. We've got loads and loads of really fun things lined up and I'm determined to find somebody who's going to give us some good dietary tips as well for our studying to um, get us off these biscuits that we keep going on about. So I'll see you in a couple of minutes for our session on time management.